quadratic functions don't really have slopes because they're not straight lines, or at least they don't have a constant slope. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to investigate the slope at different points of quadratics, and that's an actually really um, an important concept that you're going to be using when you get to like calculus um, or pre-calculus, where you find um, what are called derivatives of quadratics or, or cubics or whatever the type of graph you're looking at. But right now we're just going to consider them slopes. So what I'd like you to do for letter A is they give you this function that we used at one point in an earlier example. And they're asking you to plug in all these different values. Now obviously if T stands for seconds, it's not going to be negative. Although we, you know, would in theory pick negatives, it doesn't make sense to pick negatives. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, and you're going to be plugging in a whole bunch of numbers into this formula. So fill in this chart, and then when you're ready, play. Plot the points, and when you have all your points up, create a nice smooth curve, and it should end up making that U shape that we've seen in the past. All right, now I didn't extend it with arrow tips because, again, it doesn't make sense to go into the negatives. Letter C. For what values is the function increasing? So increasing means that the graph is going up from left to right. So up until you hit the two and a half second mark, the values are increasing. So I'm going to say as long as x is between, I guess I could be equal, um, is between 0 and 2.5 you're increasing and then obviously decreasing would be the other half of the graph because it's going down starting at 2.5 so I'll say x is between 2.5 and 5 now in reality it's like a smidge over 5 where the water balloon hits the ground uh, but we'll stop at 5 just for now. If you really had to calculate this exact point where it hits, then you do what we did a couple of lessons ago with that fireplace question and plug 0 in for the y value and then solve for x. But we're just going to keep it at 5. What I want you to do now is one at a time calculate the slope, and we're, that's like the average speed of the water balloon. So I'll do maybe the first one or two with you, and then you should get the hang of it and be able to do it on your own. So the first thing that they want us to do is from 0 to 0.5 seconds. So I'm going to go to my graph and go from 0 to 0.5 seconds, and I want to calculate this slope. So its rise, according to the table, is 36. And its run, according to the table, is 0.5. So that means that its slope is 72 feet. And then the label would be feet per second, but we can leave that off because they have it in the chart. All right, I'll do one more with you. The rise is going, I'll do the next two. The rise is going from 41 to 69. And that is 28. <laughs> so it's a 28 increase. And its run is going to be 5.5, sorry. So that means that its average rate of change down here is 56 feet per second. So can you please pause the video and calculate all the other um, rates, and if it's negative, then make sure to label it as negative. What I want to make sure that you understand is that this is representing the speed of the water balloon. So it starts off really super fast, going 72 feet per second, and then as it goes up in the air, it's getting slower and slower and slower. Its speed is going down, then it hits its maximum point, at two and a half seconds and then on its way down it's going eight feet per second then after then it goes 24 feet per second so it's gaining speed as it goes down in example two they've given us 
three different graphs that we've seen before, linear, quadratic, and exponential, and they want us to essentially do the same kind of thing. We're going to be comparing the graphs. But first question is, do the three websites ever have the same number of videos? Well, linear and quadratic both meet at 0, 0, but exponential doesn't meet at 0, 0, but they all have the same at 1, 4. So that means after one hour, all three websites, no matter which table they have, which graph they have, have four videos downloaded. I don't know if that's going to keep anyone in business, but let's move on. Letter B, complete the table for each function. So what I want to do is, let's use the first table for linear. Let's use this table for the quadratic. And let's use this table for the exponential. And I want you to do the same kind of thing. I want you to find me the slope at each point in the graph and write that down in the chart just like you just did. Pause the video and do that now. So they all start off at the same or around the same, 4, 4, 3. But then the linear, you know, boring, it stays at 4 videos every hour. The quadratic you know, that increases, and then the exponential just absolutely skyrockets over here. That's ridiculous. Um, so that's a little bit about the, difference, the differences between linear, exponential, and quadratic. And if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me in class.